back and this month I have for you one of my all-time favorite beautiful lacy expressive Canadian waltzes. This is by the great Bryony Bear and he calls it Phil and Irene's Waltz. It goes like this. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by. And if you're ready to learn it, grab your instrument. Let's dive in. Okay. So this tune is in the beautiful, pure, stately key of C major. No sharps, no flats. And as you can tell, we need lots of very beautiful bowings, beautiful, rich sound, and some um, expressive little ornaments in there to really bring this thing to life. Um, we're going to play this tune in contest form, A-A-B-A. -A -A. So it goes by very quickly. If you want to play it for dance, you could uh, elongate. Uh, I would probably just play it through more times, but up to you how it feels good for your dancers in your neck of the woods. I'm going to play through the A section slowly, and I'm going to minimize the ornamentation for right now just so you get a really good read on the melody. See how much you can pick up just playing along, listening along with me. A little bit slow. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> part one, part two, part one ending form that we see in a lot of the dance tunes, usually the faster tempo dance tunes, but waltzes can do it too, and Phil and Irene's does. So we're going to take this thing by phrase. Um, you probably already kind of got it in your ear from listening through that A section. In fact, you could just rewind the video and learn it by playing it with me all the way through, over and over a few times. That'd be the great way to do it. That'd be the traditional way to do it. If it helps you to break down a little bit, we'll do that now. I have three pickups up the scale to the C, the root of this whole thing. <laughs> Let's do that much. 
much. It's kind of up the scale and back down, right? Up the scale pickups. <laughs> Cascade down the scale. See how I did that? Right. Okay, now in addition to that cascade, that's kind of an important one, I could also put a hammer on, helping me lean into any long notes. I'm sorry. We should be ending that up though, shouldn't we? You may have already caught it. Let's try it again. Did you hear I put hammer-ons on the long note? Hammer-on, of course, being a, a single grace note for below. If I'm going for that C, I'm going to approach it stepwise from below. We've done hammer-ons in lots of previous tunes of the month, and you've probably done them a lot just in your general fiddle life. Try that first phrase again with the ornaments. Hammer-on as you like, and then get our little cascade in there. Pickups. Good, next part of the phrase. Yeah, so this is up the scale. Now I like to use a fourth finger there because it's a long note. And if I sit on my open E for a long, long time, it can get a little harsh. E strings can be a little harsh. And plus if I have my fourth finger, I can add a shimmer vibrato. Yeah. Um, so here, the bowing is important, the bow distribution. I have separate bows at the beginning here. And they're on small little eighth notes. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of bow for that little long, triple lit long. I'm slurring the triplet. Little long, triple lit long. Vibrate that fourth finger if you like. Try it again, little long. Little long. Good. You could also hammer on that E if you wanted. There you go. If you need either halves of that phrase again, just rewind the video. I'll practice with you as many times as you like. But let's put the whole first phrase together. This is the theme of Phil and Irene's A section. Three pickups. more, go ahead and rewind. I'm going on to the second phrase. I'll do it minimally ornamented. I'm doing the whole phrase there together because it makes more sense. Do it again. Two pickups. Right? I'm just kind of going down the scale and I have lit to long. Notice every time you hear that dum ba dum, that's that bowing pattern. Lit to long. Use less bow on the littles and then really open your elbow to use more bow on the long notes. Pick up a slurred. And now we're gonna go pickups up the scale. Pickups up the scale. Let's put the whole phrase together. Good, 
Good. Hopefully you're copying Boeing's more or less from me. Always in waltzes, Boeing's get very personal, but in general, you want to be down bow on the downbeats. And you really want to check how much bow you're using for things, right? Like we're using less bow for the littles. When you slur things and have more bow, um, longer rhythmic values, you're going to slow your bow down. There will be more bow kind of saved so you don't use too much. And then when you have a separate quarter note or something like that, lighten up your contact a little bit and let it move. That way it doesn't accent the notes that you keep on a separate bow. We've worked on this in past two of the months, so I'm not saying too much about it here and letting you use your own bowing instincts, but I highly recommend if there's any place you're not sure about how to bow, just watch me and mirror what I'm doing. It's a good solution. It's not the only solution. Okay, so we've got that second phrase kind of mapped out. We can start putting in some ornaments. Now the first step with all the ornaments when you're making fancy waltzes is to put those hammer-ons in on any long notes, right? On the beginnings of long notes. Right, and then you could put them in different places. I just put a couple in places that I like, but you can move them around. The second layer is to start using that little cascade. Right, so maybe you heard where I put one in there. Now cascades go on the back end of long notes, right? On the back end of the C. Right, that little cascade or fall. I go above the note that I have that long C. I'm going to go above it so I can fall down, right? And I tend to put them on the back ends of long notes that are going to be moving to a lower note. So rather than just going da da, I get a little more dum ba da hum, a little more downward motion because I go above to start it. Does that make sense? Second phrase. to the first phrase and it's a little variation this time. Pickups go down the scale. Alright, so you have this time up the scale, up the scale and slur long cascade ornamented, this time we're going to go triplets. Oh, I love it. Listen again. So there's a great bowing in there. In general, my triplets are going to slur all three notes of the triplet, like we've been doing, right? Down, up. Now this guy, I'm going to go down slur, so I land down bow on that Long E. Sometimes we call that a bounce slur. Down slur. Because you're very gently bouncing off the down bow. It's such a graceful move. Okay, so that's an ornamented, a variated first phrase that comes back the second time. Let's do it. Variation. first phrase. Yeah, here comes the last phrase, the fourth phrase or the ending. the second phrase. Okay, so it starts 
starts with a little different pickup. It has a high pickup. It's a pickup and a triplet. And triplet. Now this is like second phrase. Keep going down. And finish down the scale and up to C. One more time, last phrase. fancy Canadian waltzes, Texas waltzes, um, both <laughs> genres, tend to be long form waltzes. So each phrase itself is eight bars, right? And that's why it can feel a little bit longer than your normal standard dance tune, but that's okay because they're so melodic. And if you just sing the phrases over and over, play them back, sing them back, listen, play with me, repeat, rewind the video a lot. Um, they come together really quickly just by singing the melody. All right, so let's pretend that you've practiced all four of those A section phrases, first phrase, second phrase, first phrase variation, and then the end of the phrase. In fact, we don't have to pretend if you want to rewind and do it right now, you totally can. Um, but let's put the whole A section together and we're gonna play it through twice. One, two, three, one, two. First phrase. places, more places to put little hammer-ons and the front ends on the front ends of your long notes and little cascades on the back ends, right? So those are two of the big ornamental groups. The other big ornamental group, of course, are the triplets, right? Where we would have in the first part when it comes back turns into triplets. So those are just fill-in triplets. We've done those in past tune of the month, actually in the context of a lot of hornpipes, right? When we've done our dotted hornpipes, we've looked at how you can take a duple, especially a duple that has a skip, and then insert another note to make it a triplet. That's what's going on here. And in the Canadian waltzes, when you're fancy assizing them to put in lots of triplets as, you know, kind of structural melodic ornaments, works really nicely. So yeah, the hammer-ons on the front ends of long notes, cascades on the backs of long notes, and in the moving notes, playing with duples versus triples. Okay, so you can play with that A section a whole bunch, rewind, get comfortable, and then we need a B section. I'll play it through for you um, so you can hear it because it's been a minute since I did it at the beginning. Get it back in your ears. B section.
section. Oh, isn't that juicy? Some killer double stops in there, and you can hear how awesome uh, Brian's harmonic writing is. But we'll get to that in a second. First, we need the melodic part of the B section, the first time through. And the double stops are really just a variation of this, so the more to get in your ears, the easier the double stops are. Here we go. First phrase. Two pickups. <laughs> That's really the, the first phrase, yeah, the first part. I'll do it again. Let's do just that much, first half of the phrase. To hear down the scale is also little big. Try it again, pickups. Good, I'm gonna start to ornament, you'll hear Hammer-ons on the front, cascades on the back. Maybe you can already hear where they're going to go. Try it again. Second half of the phrase, I'm going to stay right there. Okay, so there's the first flash of brilliant harmony. Two pickups. Do you have it? Try one more time with me. Good. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to start to ornament. You can too. Okay, so let's put that first half and second half of the phrase together. the video. I'm going to go on. Second phrase. Yeah, it's a simple second phrase. Let's take that in halves. So first half has this little back and forth noodly thing. Now triple it and it's on a little F chord. Triple it and so F noodle, F triplet chord. Good. And next part is just up the scale. Yeah, it's super easy. But I like to do the opposite of a cascade here. We call that a little scoop ornament. And I'm going to ornament into the top of the scale, the G, by backing off a note so I can actually go up the scale. Up the scale and the tune, up the scale and the ornaments. Isn't that a great little thing, a scoop? It's the opposite of a cascade, right? Which helps us go down with more momentum melodically. The scoop helps us go up with more momentum. Let's try that whole second phrase. F noodle. And up the scale. Good, one more time. the melodic half. Before we get into the double stops, 
Let's put the whole melodic half together so you can really hear this chord progression. All right, here it comes. Two, three, one, two. in a second so you can kind of get that ready. Good, let's do it one more time. B section, first half. Good, so when you finish that, Raise to your G sharp, and then this A. Very important that you play this with a fourth finger because it's about to turn to double stops. I'm talking to you, string players. If you're a flute player or somebody who doesn't do double stops, this next part you would just play the variation. Uh, I'm sorry, the melodic part of the B section again, right? Play it like going back to part one. But if you're a stringed instrument or an accordion or a piano or somebody who likes to play double stops, hang on to your hats. Here it comes. play down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, right, down, up, up, down, up. The bowing pattern and the rhythm stayed the same. Probably just to highlight the, mel uh, the, the harmony changes, right? So, chromatic, fourth finger, add your second finger. All right, so I'll show you this mapping of the double stops. I have my fourth finger, boom, I add my second across, and now I'm gonna keep that second finger down and play three, one on the other string. So I have four, connects to my second finger on the A string. Second finger's gonna stay there. Does that make sense? Can you see it on the video? Boom, boom. These are what I call one potato, two potato double stops where I'm not really changing very much at all. In fact, I'm only changing one note at a time. Right, fourth finger turns into the second finger. Second finger's gonna stay through the third and the first, right? So you're only moving one voice at a time. Let's try just that much. Here's my landing. Pick up fourth, add the second. Keep there, second. Good, try it again. Fourth goes to second. Second stays. Good, try it again. Fourth to second. Now, here's the one move you have. You're here on your C chord. Both voices are gonna move together. Okay, so moving from the sixth I'm talking in intervals now. Here's my sixth C chord. I'm gonna hop my first finger back to the B flat. You remember where that was in the melody? And add my third finger below it. Odds T. Three, one. So six hops to the third. And you see how my finger pattern has to change? My first and second are together. First and second are apart. Let's try it. that much. Fourth to second. Keep second down. Here's our switch. Hop to your third. B flat. Keep the B flat. Yeah, 
so that second half, once I've got my B flat, my B flat's gonna change while I move to my second finger below it, and second finger's gonna change while I add my fourth finger on the bottom string. Right, so the second finger bridges across. Let's try the whole thing. Fourth, add the second. Second stay. Three one on the bottom. Switch B flat. Keep the first finger B flat. Two and lean across to four and two. And in fact, that's the really on um, terms of the feel on your fingerboard. That's the same four and two you were starting at, just over a string. Ooh, and that's the whole first phrase. Let's try that again. All those double stops. Four goes to two. Keep two. B flat first finger. Keep first finger. Lean across to four and two. Good, one more time. Four goes to two. Stay right there. Here's the juiciest moment of the whole thing. This is D and F natural. I want you to lower your fourth finger to a D flat. Oh, it just gives you chills. Yeah, and once you hit that D flat, you're done with the double stops. Now we have the very ending, no double stops. Do that very ending. And then we're back to the A section. Ah, you did it, all of a sudden you're out of the double stops. Should we put them all together? Do it from the beginning of the double stops. Chromatic pickup, four goes to two. Because again, they're what I call the one potato, two potato double stops, right? Where almost never are you moving two fingers at once. You're leaving somebody down while somebody else moves. It's actually good voice leading if you're thinking harmonically. Um, yeah, so if you need more practice on that, you can pause the video, practice yourself. You can rewind practice with me. Whatever it takes to get that mileage, it is worth it. Okay. So let's pretend you practice that and we're going to put together the whole B section, the melodic first half and then the harmonic second half with those double stops. Again, if you are not an instrument who plays double stops, just play the first half again and join us for the ending. Okay? to the A, doesn't it? The harmony sets it up to go back to C major. So let's actually do that one more time. Let's do the whole B section. And this time, 
we're going to carry it back around to the A to finish, right? Remember the form goes A, A, B, A. So pretend you've just played two A sections, and then here comes the B, and... Again, they tend to show up, these really fancy ones with lots of structural ornaments, lots of double stops, uh, lots of really intricate bowing patterns. They tend to show up mostly in the Canadian and the Texas style, and they're all glorious, and they all take time to really settle into. As you can see when we break this down, there's not a lot of individual elements that are difficult, right? Uh, even the double stops that they may seem new to you if you're not used to using those kinds of double stops, but only one voice moving at a time, it's not that bad. What it is, is highly intricate. So it takes a lot of repetition, a lot of practice to get comfortable with each little move, right? Making sure you put cascades in the right place, making sure you put lit to long in the right place, every triplet's in the right place, every double stop. And it almost can feel like the thing is through composed, right? Like in the B section that the first half and the second half are kind of totally different because we have that double stop variation. So again, take some time to practice and really get this into your fingers, but oh, is it so worth it? At least if you love the tune as much as I do. Um, you can also take these ideas and apply it to others of your waltzes to turn them into big, fancy Canadian style waltzes heading towards Texas style waltzes. Um, they both use the same kind of ornamentation, same kind of double stops. Um, gross generalization, I would say the Texas double stops, uh, Texas waltzes use more double stops, the Canadian waltzes use more triplet and ornamentation, but both have both, and um, it's really fun. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. If it helps you to see uh, my handwritten chicken scratch sheet music for this tune, um, good luck reading my handwriting with all this stuff, but hey, I've put it in my email newsletter and sent it out to anybody who subscribes. So if you are a subscriber, you've already received Phil and Irene's Waltz in your inbox. If you have not yet subscribed, maybe you're new to Tune of the Month, welcome. Um, go ahead and head over to my website, www.mariblack.com, that's me, and you can sign up for my email newsletter there, and that means that you'll get all future tunes of the month sheet music coming to your inbox as the months go on. Hope you guys had fun with this. I'll look forward to seeing you next month for more tunes. Happy practicing.